Have you ever heard of atichophobia? If you've never heard of it, it might be the case that you've in fact been suffering from it. And if you have been suffering from it, we might have some medication that might work for it. But first, before you can know if you were suffering from it, we gotta know what it means. And atichophobia is simply a mental health condition in which a person has a fear of negative evaluation or they have high anxiety regarding being evaluated at all. This condition is also related to a fear of failure or more specifically, an extreme fear of failure. Because after all, who doesn't fear failing a little bit, right? We all fear failing and so we all have fear of failure. But atichophobia takes that fear of failure to another level. And while we might talk about paralysis through analysis, where people don't take action because they're trying to analyze all the bits of information available, and as a result, they make no decision. We could also talk about paralysis from analysis, where we get paralyzed, petrified, anxious, scared over ourselves being analyzed, over our work being analyzed, over our actions being analyzed, and having someone else place some kind of judgment upon whether or not we're doing a good job. And I know what you're saying, everybody has this kind of fear. Everyone in some ways is a little bit afraid of being analyzed. Who likes being evaluated or judged? Except for maybe those people on Judge Judy who go on to that show. I don't know why, because they know how Judge Judy is gonna treat them. Listen to me. I, I want you to shut up and listen. Okay. Hey, furniture. stop talking. Pretty. Shut up and listen. Sit, Please. sit For down. So we don't like being judged, but being evaluated and being judged is just part of our lives. It's part of growing up. It's part of the world we live in. We're constantly being evaluated. And while our fears of being evaluated, our fears of failure might not reach the levels of an atikophobic, nevertheless, they can have detrimental effects on ourselves, our work, our relationships. And to be honest, it's not just the people being evaluated that might dislike the process of evaluation. As a professor, as a teacher, the thing I like about the job the least is the fact that I have to do grading. It's not so much giving feedback, but it's the process of evaluation, of assigning a grade. Managers will talk about not liking the process of performance reviews or having to go through and evaluate and judge the work of their employees. It seems like nobody likes evaluation. Everyone approaches performance evaluations and evaluation metrics with this sense of, do we have to? I think part of the problem here is that people can feel really vulnerable when they're in a position to be evaluated, that we're giving ourselves over to someone else and putting ourselves in their hands to judge us, to say whether we're doing a good job or not. And that can be pretty threatening. And this can be especially true when that evaluation is just one way, when someone else has the power to judge you, but you are in no position or don't have the power to judge them. You're the one always being evaluated, but you can never do the evaluation back. So it feels a bit um, as directed against you versus working with somebody to find ways to create a better situation or to create better outcomes. Maybe this should have came with a trigger warning because you might be thinking about a time when you were subjected to evaluations that you really resented or weren't happy with. Uh, and you might have disliked the entire process of it, not seen the value in it or not seen the benefit of doing it. And we can think about what are the reasons for us feeling this way? And more importantly, what could have been done differently to make the evaluation process better, more beneficial? Despite all of the reasons why people don't like evaluation, and there's a lot of reasons to not like evaluations, it's still part of our lives. We can't escape it. It's just we have to exist with it for better or for worse. And so one of the key questions is how to make it better and not worse. How can we turn evaluation into a beneficial part of our employment, of the employee experience? How can we make the evaluation process something that not everybody dreads, but people can actually, if not enjoy, at least see the utility of? 
can survive in a way that isn't so painful, that doesn't make us atikophobic, for instance. It's no doubt that evaluation programs, performance reviews have real impacts, and it can have real impacts on the entire organization. It's an enterprise level problem. It affects everybody, right? Because everybody is touched by, in one way or another, by performance reviews and evaluation metrics. So to make better evaluation programs, we need to design our evaluation approaches in a way that is more inclusive through inviting participation from all people that are involved. We also have to think about an end result, which is meant to benefit rather than to punish. And we also have to think about other ways to make the process more helpful than harmful. In this next series of videos, we're gonna be looking at a few different approaches along with some fundamental components and aspects of co-design and participatory design in order to create an inclusive evaluation and performance review process. At least lay some of the fundamental elements that we should consider when we're looking at how to create a better performance review and evaluation process. Because ultimately the thing we're trying to achieve, and this is important to remember, the thing we're trying to achieve is we wanna make it better in terms of employee experience and also make it a way that we can drive better organizational culture and better outcomes for everyone involved. And we want a process that is gonna be more inclusive, more productive, and more beneficial.